just come down to harvest some mini pops. Here we have the Unwin mini pops and you can see the silks here just turning red. So these are looking as if they're ready for cropping this evening. And it's only got about an hour before the sun sets. So we haven't come down um, in the heat of the day. Time to pick them, they're Unwins. This mini pop's about perfect by the looks of it. So just unpeeling it from there and it's an unwinds. And as you can see from the tassel or silk, whatever you want to call it, uh, it's ripe. Incidentally, some people use these silks from uh, sweet corns for various medicinal purposes. These sweet corn are early bird variety. And as you can see, some of these are looking uh, as if they'll be ready. And I could leave one or two of them later. And basically was worried a bit about the pollination of these um, due to the extremely hot weather, but looks like they are slowly maturing. So early bird, yep, there's one there. Looking like quite a monster. There's the size of my hand by comparison and it's uh, well, it's huge compared to that, so it should be okay, these early birds. After following the advice of robotic um, allotment, uh, we've been spraying the flowers on these beans, stringless, these are stringless, in excessive heat. So we've used a mist of some water and they're now set, starting to set some veg. Um, so I don't know that they are as uh, stringless as I thought, because it's the first time I've grown this variety, but Oh, there's a bit of a monster, didn't realise that's all one, isn't it? There you go, so a little bit more success now. We've had about four or five of these beetroot cylindras, and I'm trying to catch them this year before they go into sort of gigantic phase. Um, because I think they're more flavoursome when they're a bit more bijou. We've also popped down to pick yet another cabbage and these were from, from the competition and that one there as you can see it's forming a nice head up crown there so uh, I've got to pick one the ones we've had earlier I think have been the Savoy and there's a variety here it was a variety pack for a couple of quid from Morrison's um, all bar one they've done very well we felt sorry for Runty cabbage today, so I thought I'd back off, leave Runty to grow up to be a big cabbage. You know, it's a bit like the chap who gets sand kicked in his face, doesn't it, on the beach. So we'll let him tough it up in the gym, and then one day he can aspire to being just like number 10. But number 10's time is up now. As you can see, it's developed quite nicely um, inside. Oh, that's looking lovely. So, of course, the outer leaves are sacrificed, aren't they? Uh, and uh, I'll take that one home. Off we go. Well, here's number 10 in all its glory with a lovely heart there. So if you pick number 10 on the cabbage failure, you obviously put good luck onto it because it's turned out to be a nice, lovely, lovely cabbage. And we've been having it this week, actually, with mash carrots and mash and nice sausages Cumberland sausages my favorite but cabbage and mash oh you can't beat it can you plums have been attacked a lot this year with it being incredibly hot so I've done gone for the um, Vaseline around the bottom of the trunk there and sprayed it last time I came down uh, this time I've used a mixture of eucalyptus and a little bit of tea tree, just a few drops of essential oil rather than what, the, what I've grown on the allotment and the pressure sprayer. That does seem to have done the trick because this thing was totally infested last time, a lot less so now and they'd also started to attack the plums. Just notice that there's lace wings on it which, which are goodies, uh, they fight good fight and also some ladybirds, a uh, few ants but you know you can't, hey ho, you can't have a crop without a bit of uh, you know, an adventure, can you? Because you're trying to do something which is sort of, you know, for you rather than just for nature. But yes, yeah, done well, ripening away. 
it's nice to have just even a you know a little bunch of apples on a fairly new dwarf fruit stock this one's only been in, on this plot for a, a few years um and it's not about how much you get it's like do you know to, just how nice to have a little crop because some of the others have lots i'm sure this one will be incredibly tasty shan't be long before these bramleys are ready and uh, they can join my 35 a day as well that i'm currently having at the moment um, Bramley's, of course, what a wonderful story. A girl in a neighbouring village to here planted a seed, just an apple seed in her back garden. It grew into a tree, an apple tree, and then it was spotted by a visitor, a nursery man. He said, can I have a couple of branches? Took some, and he grafted them onto some rootstock, and uh, it really caught on because the apple variety became Britain's favourite apple. And here's a clone from the original, because they're all they all are, aren't they? Taken from grafts onto dwarf fruit. And while I'm down, I might as well have some nice chamomile. It looks like the ants like chamomile. Perhaps it gives them a good night's sleep as well. Um, so I'm going to mix it in with some mint and a bit of lavender, maybe a bit of lemon balm, just like a little dirt. This the uh, Good old recipe, isn't it really? I do like this sort of herbal stuff, it seems to work on me. I think the pears this year, it'll be quality rather than quantity. Probably got about 50 or 60 on um, the plot. So basically, uh, just happy to have anything really. Um, again, pear rust has been a bane, but with the remedies, you know, the milk and bicarb etc um, and also you've got to watch out for your ants well that's where your tea tree comes in and your garlic sprays pressure sprayers fantastic thank you youtubers for showing me those because i used to use just ordinary spray cans but pressure sprayers oh my goodness are they fantastic the back of this allotment has given over to wild things but i've got some nice mint here uh, proper garden mint it's lovely that's all type of stuff that you can put in your tea or make mint tea from and of course um, big swathes of uh, blackberries as treats the birds love these um, but of course you do get hawks here that's a kill that that's a blackbird that's been killed by a hawk probably I'm thinking maybe a buzzard not sure um, the hot weather has also is also ripening up the elderberries despite the drought I mean, these are a little bit shrunken, but the berries are ripening. Mine at home are just about fully ripe and the wood pigeons are tucking in. Oh, I just heard a mosquito then. Luckily, I've got the incognito. I do recommend incognito for, land, for you people on your um, allotments, etc. Uh, the reason I mention this is I've had a few bits of rhubarb now, and I know it's late, it's early August, but some of these, a few, I don't I only take one or two off each one if I want one. So last time I came down, I only had, only took uh, three or four stalks, but I found that they're still tender. So they weren't um, stringy, they were really nice. Basically just, um, you know, simmer them up, boil them up, a bit of brown sugar, and away you go with some nice Cornish ice cream. Mmm, Cornish ice cream. And of course, you've got to take some of your own blackberries from your plot, uh, mix with and that, your rhubarb and some Cornish ice cream. Brilliant, all part of your 35 a day, as I said. Of course, if you are gardening, you can't resist you know, the blackberries, can you? I mean, you've got to have one as you're down here, don't you? On the hoof, they are the best, aren't they, blackberries? Of course, the blackbirds love them as well. And wood pigeons, they'll hurt themselves. But you better watch out for hawks, as I've shown you earlier. Well, as the uh, mosquitoes start buzzing around, as you can see, there's the trusty incognito there. It's what we're using at the moment, incognito anti-mosquito repellent. 100% natural, they say. Right, uh, there's the haul for today's shenanigans. Um, uh, Spring onions, bit of rhubarb, beetroot cylindra, the cabbage, I've mentioned that already. Uh, mini pots, there they are, you can see what their tassels on them. And some sweet corn from the other side. So, that should keep us busy. Um, apples aren't ready yet, obviously. Um, soft fruits, long gone except for the blackberries. And uh, the best ones we've got are the ones right at the back there. 
So early indications are that the Unwin's Mini Pops seem to be better on our plot than Johnson's. I'm not saying they're better Mini Pops, I'm just saying up here in the Midlands, um, which was known as the belly of uh, England in medieval times under Anglo-Saxon rule, uh, this was where a lot of the food was grown for the various kingdoms. And uh, these are doing really well, the Unwin Unwin's Mini Pops. Temperatures have still been soaring, so again, borrowing a leaf out of robotic gardener's advice, we're going to get some pressure sprayer onto this and spray the flowers before we go to get, get it to set some more. Here we have today's pickings, all trimmed, washed, and uh, ready. So on the left, you've got your beetroot cylindra, followed by your spring onions, then there you've got your Johnson's uh, mini pops, uh, you've got early bird sweet corn there, then you've got your Unwin's mini pops, and you've got your cabbage there. Well I'm being proper buzzed now so it must be time to go, the mosquitoes are getting ever more bloodthirsty as the year goes on, in August they're far worse than July. 